Are you getting stressed out by scary Halloween face paintings on social media? I do too. My name is Lilia from Lilia's Art. I'm a professional face painter and in this episode I will share with you what I do to avoid constantly getting brain shocks around Halloween. If you have any additional tips, let's help each other out and please share them in the comments. So how can you protect yourself from scary Halloween face paintings on social media? Unfortunately, it won't be possible to filter out all monsters, skulls, blood and gore designs. I wish it was. It really makes me feel uncomfortable physically and mentally and I suppose you feel the same because, well, you're listening to this episode. Some people avoid social media around Halloween in general. Some use them less often. But if this is not an option for you, there are a few things you can do to protect yourself a bit more. My general advice for you are two things. Number one, scroll with care. In October, I don't scroll down my news feeds on social media like I normally do. Actually, if I'm really honest, I never mindlessly scroll down news feeds that are about face painting. But especially around Halloween, I scroll down slowly. First, I check the title if there is one and the upper few millimeters of the next upcoming post and decide whether I want to look at it or scroll right past it. If the second applies, I try to focus on the white space around posts, even though our eyes naturally get drawn to the colorful squares, right? It took me a while to train myself to do that, but it was worth it. And the second tip is, if you're taking bookings for Halloween, try to prepare your designs before October. It gives you more time to recover mentally and you don't feel as much pressure to be on social media around Halloween because you won't need inspirations for upcoming geeks anymore. Now each social media platform has different options you can use and I will cover Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest and Instagram now. Let's start with Facebook because as far as I know this is the place with the biggest face painting community. The groups there are amazing for any kind of advice, support and inspiration, right? And I just happen to have the most tips for using Facebook on that topic. So if you're in face painting Facebook groups and your personal news feed is getting too scary because Facebook shows group content on it, you have the option to snooze particular groups for 30 days by choosing that option directly on a post that's shown on your newsfeed, or you can hide it manually for as long as you want. To do that, go to the group page and there should be an option at the top. You can also leave the group and re-enter maybe two weeks after Halloween. Make sure to write down a note somewhere with the names of the groups you left so you can find your way back easily. At this point, I want to acknowledge Facebook groups who are aware that the topic is triggering to some people, like the newbie face painters help group, for example. They have it in their group guidelines to only post scary pictures and comments so that those don't show up in the group feed to everyone. People post a text saying maybe, I painted some special effects today, it pics in the comments. And if you want to see it, you can click on that. Thank you very much for doing that. However, of course it still happens sometimes, so we still have to be on guard. The snooze or hide function are also great for pages and even contacts if you need. If these are close contacts, you can also let them know about it in advance, right? And tell them to contact you via direct messages for the time being. The next tip, I'm not really sure about if it's helpful, but I will tell you anyway. Um, it's an option to prevent yourself from exposure, but still know what's going on on Facebook. You can go to your Facebook settings, turn on the email notifications, and then you don't have to open Facebook to see what's going on and instead just check your emails. My email program is set up in a way that it won't show pictures without my agreement. So I receive an email with a title that say, Sarah Cleveland posted something in inspiration to paint. That's a group. That could be anything, right? But I wasn't exposed to anything unprepared. So I can choose whether I want to open it or not. If I do, it shows only the text of what Sarah posted in that group. Um, by the way, I don't know any Sarah Cleveland, but if that's your name, hi. If the title of that post starts with boo or something like that, I just delete it. And if it sounds like it would be a nice picture, I might go see it. Check what else you can do with those face painting email notification settings. Useful options to choose are notifications if somebody sent you a private message or if someone mentioned or tagged you. That could be interesting, right? It can be a bit overwhelming to receive many emails, so do what serves you best. And my last Facebook tip is this. You can also avoid seeing posts at all by only using the Facebook Messenger app on your smartphone. Ta-da! And before I continue to talk about the other platforms, let me just say that I think we don't owe anyone an explanation of why we are not as active on social media around Halloween. 
unless of course we have clients contacting us there. It is our choice to protect ourselves from harm. And if social media is the cause, it is wise to avoid it. Don't feel pressured. Next up is YouTube. So if there are channels who post Halloween designs and you don't want to see them, you have the option to unsubscribe for maybe a month and subscribe again later. Again, take notes so that you can get back to them easily. Or just turn off the notifications during that time if that's enough for you. I don't see myself painting anything scary on my channel Lilia's art, maybe an innocent smiling pumpkin, but nothing that would scare myself and I'm highly sensitive so you don't have to worry about it. I think my last Batman was the peak of scariness I would paint, uh, if that's even a word. I personally find it easier to use YouTube on desktop because the thumbnails are smaller than on my smartphone and there is more white space around them to look at if needed. Not sure if that helps you. A strategy I found to avoid Halloweenish video suggestions when you open YouTube is to first unsubscribe to the pertaining face painting channels in October and then bookmark your subscription feed. You know, on your desktop homepage on YouTube, on the upper left side it says Home, Trending and Subscriptions. Open the subscription site and bookmark it. And then next time you open YouTube, do that by clicking on the bookmark and only find pleasant videos to look at. <laughs> I also watch videos on full screen so that there are no spooky suggestions popping up on the right side while I watch. But if you do this, you have to be careful. You have to exit the full screen mode right before the video ends or else you will see even bigger thumbnails of suggested videos on your full screen. <sighs> if that's too complicated and you want to relax, just cover the suggestions with a sheet of paper or a book. I've done it. It works. That's all I have about YouTube for you. For Pinterest, I use the bookmark trick as well. You can avoid the random suggestions on your home feed. Just bookmark the page of your own boards, which you chose, right? To avoid looking at something unpleasant. And if you're ready, then start researching about what you want to know. I'm not using Pinterest often, so I don't have more tips on that for now. And the last platform I want to talk about is Instagram. And this one frustrates me the most because I haven't found any way to avoid scary posts, except for looking at my own pictures only. But mm, what's the point? Last week I opened the app and the first picture was something just horrible. <laughs> Technically well made of course, but it's just so awful for me to see it. And there's no way the algorithm will understand that I hate this kind of content. <sighs> so I came up with an idea to create some safe space on Instagram. Let me know what you think about it. The idea is to start a featuring account where I feature only non-triggering face paintings by artists around the world. On that account there will be no blood, no dark theme paintings, no skulls, no special effects, no gore, and because I don't like them, no snakes and spiders. <laughs> and for those of you who are spiritually sensitive as well, no witches, no ghosts and stuff. There are enough hashtags where you can find these if you still want to see those posts, right? And I really want to create some safe space for people who need it, and I myself also want to use Instagram with joy around Halloween. So the account will be called Joyful Face Paintings. <laughs> There's also a link to it in the description. So if you like the idea, go follow that baby account and feel free to send me your suggestions. It can be your own pictures or from artists you really love. I want to give credit to the artist, so please make sure the picture is branded. And if it's not yours, please let me know how I can contact the original artist first as well. And because I think it would benefit our industry, I'd also like to share posts who show a certain level of skill. No, don't worry, it doesn't have to be like super advanced. And sometimes it's small things that make us happy, right? But I think there is a need for our industry to be perceived a bit more professionally in general. So why not support that? Please send me your ideas or just enjoy the post there. Also, stay safe around Halloween and share this episode if you know any other face painter that can use the social media tips too. Thank you for listening and take care.